ओके सो वेनेवर वी रन द प्रोग्राम लेट से पाइथन नोट पैड फोटोशॉप और एनी अदर प्रोग्राम वी आर एग्जीक्यूटिंग द डिफरेंट एग्जीक्यूटेबल ईच टाइम यस वी नो दैट दिज एग्जीक्यूटेबल्स कंटेंट्स डिफरेंट डेटा एंड कोड्स विच लेट आर एप्लीकेशन फंक्शन प्रॉपरली बट हाउ दिस डेटा एंड कोड्स आर स्टोर्ड इन दिस फाइल्स एंड हाउ द सी पी यू इज एबल टू इंटरप्रिट दैम लेट्स एक्सप्लोर इट अ लिटल बिट लेट मी फर्स्ट गो टू द ब्राउजर एंड सर्च फॉर द डिफरेंट कैटेगरीज ऑफ एग्जीक्यूटेबल फाइल ओके सो एज यू कैन सी दैट द एग्जीक्यूटेबल फाइल्स कम्स इन मैनी डिफरेंट फॉर्मेट वी हैव डॉट ई एक्सी फॉर्मेट डॉट सिस फॉर्मेट डॉट बी एस एस फॉर्मेट एंड मैनी अदर डिफरेंट फॉर्मेट टूडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू पर्टिकुलरली लुक एट द स्टैंडर्ड एंड कॉमन एग्जीक्यूटेबल फाइल फॉर्मेट दैट इज एग्जीक्यूटेबल एंड लिंकेबल फॉर्मेट ऑल्सो समटाइम्स कॉल्ड एज एल्फ एग्जीक्यूटेबल सो वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू डू इज दैट वी विल क्रिएट आर ओन एल्फ एग्जीक्यूटेबल फाइल फ्रॉम अ सिंपल हेलो वर्ल्ड सी प्रोग्राम एंड देन वी विल इन्वेस्टिगेट वॉट इज इन साइड देयर दिस एग्जीक्यूटेबल फाइल सो लेट मी गो टू दिस टर्मिनल एंड राइट आउट आर सिंपल हेलो वर्ल्ड सी प्रोग्राम Okay, so we have created a simple hello world C program which will print the string hello world and a new line character. Let me compile it with GCC compiler and execute it. Okay, so here we have the executable file hello. let me execute it and let's see what it prints so as we have programmed uh, we it prints the string hello world and a new line character okay so if we try to find the information about this file using file command uh, let's see what it uh, can give us so it is uh, saying that it is an elf executable file for 64 bit architecture and it is also uh, saying that it is an dynamically linked file and here it gives us the information about the interpreter which is going to interpret this file now to see all the content of uh, the executable we can use uh, a utility called readelf so simply write uh, readelf with option a and the file name Okay, so here it is uh, showing us the different section of the file and uh, at it at the top we have the elf header section which contains the information about uh, information about the type of the file and uh, some other information uh, let me open the main page of elf header in another window Okay, so this is the manual of elf dot h header file, which provides the different C structure, which we can use to create uh, the elf executable file in C language. It is saying that an executable file using the elf file format consists of an elf header followed by a program header table or a section header table or both. if we see the output of uh, readelf utility we can see that as it said in manual first of all we have uh, elf header and uh, after that we have the section header table and after section header table we have the program header table 
let me collapse this subterminal and explore all these uh, sections one by one so here first of all we have the elf header the elf header is always at offset 0 of the file the elf header is 52 byte or 64 byte long for 32 bit and 64 bit binaries respectively the first four magic bytes are fixed with 7f and character elf in hexadecimal which indicates that the file is in elf format it also contains the information such as class of the file data representation format type of the file whether it is static or dynamic required architecture entry point address and many other information but the two of the most important pieces of information are the start of program header table and start of section header table after the elf header these two tables describes the remaining content of the file This is the section header table. It has all the information about the different section of the file. An executable file can have zero or more section. Here we have a total of 30 different section along with their name, size, address and so on. Among these many section, some of the most important ones are text section, raw data section, data section and BSS section. The text section contains the executable codes with read and execute permission. The data section contains the initialized data with read and write permission. Raw data section also contains the initialized data but with read permission only. And BSS section contains uninitialized data with read or write permission. After the section header table, readelf is showing the message that there are no section group in this file. As in ELF file format, some section can be grouped together as per their internal references. After the section header table and section group, we have our program header table. Program header describes zero or more memory segment. Here the type column describes what kind of memory segment it is. Then we have an offset and file size column, virtual address and memory size column and physical address column. Here the flag defines the accessibility rights and the align has the value to which the segments are aligned in memory and in the file. The PHDR segment specifies the location and size of the program header. The interp segment specifies the location and size of the path name where the interpreter is present. And this is the place from where the file utility is getting information about the interpreter. The next for load segment defines the loadable memory segment and it is arranged from low virtual address to high virtual address. Some of them are readable and executable while others have only read access right. Then we have a dynamic segment containing the dynamic linking information with read and write permission. After that it contains some other minor information. Here we have section to segment mapping. The interp section has been mapped to segment 1 which specifies the location where path name of interpreter is present. The dot text section has been mapped to segment 3 which is loadable segment and so on. Now here each section has been mapped to a segment of the program header table. But uh, we have already seen the entry for each section in section header table. Then why do we need another mapping of section using segment? Keep in mind that both the program header table and section header table contain the same data about different section, but they index them in quite different style. Each segment contains information required by the system to prepare the process for execution while the section contains important data for linking and relocation. So these three things, the ELF header, the section header table and the program header table are the major part of the ELF executable. The rest of the file describes the different sections specified in the section header table. Now let's discuss some of the sections that have been given here. Here it is the dynamic section. It contains the information for dynamic linking process. 
This is the relocation section which contains the information that associate the symbolic references with its definition. For example, if there is an instruction that calls any function, the relocation section content help in transferring the control to the proper destination address. It is the symbol table section. It contains a list of names or symbols and their corresponding offsets in the text and data segment. The value column gives the value associated with the symbols. Bind column specifies the binding attribute as the scope of the symbol that is local, global, weak, etc. This column describes the visibility of symbols with respect to other modules and, and the NDX column indicates the relevant section header index. Here we have GNU has GNU version and different note section which contains the information usually used by the system. Okay, so now we know that there are many different sections in the ELF executable file. If we see the section header table, we have a total of 30 different sections. To see the content of any particular section, we can use the option X in the read ELF utility. Let's see the content of the row data section, which is the section number 16. Okay, so to see the content of any section, simply type the read elf with option X and uh, the section name or section number. So I am writing 16 for section row data and the file name. So here it is showing us the hex dump of section row data. As row data contains the initialized data of the program. So and the only initialized data are in our program is the hello world string. So here it is showing us that. Okay, so some of the major things that you can take away from this video is that the ELF files comes in many, the executable files comes in many different format. And ELF is the standard and common executable file format. It has a ELF header which contains the information about the start of program header table and the start of section header table and the rest of the file is handled by these two tables. With these takeaways, let's wrap up this video. I hope this video helped you a little bit to understand the inner architecture of the executable file. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.